Hello and welcome to Just Vintage Crochet. We're gonna do another mystery pattern. And if you're new to my channel, I've got all these patterns. Their, their titles are completely blacked out. These patterns are from many different decades, ranging all the way back from the 1840s and all the way up to the 1980s. So as you can see, each pattern is numbered. So I shuffle through, I pick a number, and we work the pattern that matches the number. And we won't know what it is until we're done making it. We peel back the tape and we see what it's called. And in some of these later patterns, uh, we do have actual illustrations as these much older patterns like 1860s and stuff don't really. But like this one here is from 1981. It's going to have a picture. So we're going to get to see what our work is actually meant to look like. Okay, here we go. Let's pick a pattern. I, I just love doing these so much. Here we go. You can see I'm just shuffling them up. And... There we go, let's see what we got. Number eight, okay, and this is gonna be, for those of you who are regulars, this number eight with nothing else on it is gonna be from our new pile that we added back at our 2,000 subscriber special. I went through here and I actually marked the years for the ones we've been working on, so we won't be confused. So we're gonna do number eight, which, oh, it's right here on top. 1870, okay. An 1870 pattern and Let's see, what all do we have here? So bear in mind, 1870s is, th these come from a American book, a US written book, but they are probably going to be using some UK terms. So if you see me making a double crochet, if it happens to say trouble, that's totally normal. So yeah, two trouble divided. So that's gonna likely be two double crochet because they were using UK terms. All right, so let's see what it says here. This, we don't know, is suitable for a great variety of purposes according to the size of the cotton employed. So we don't have to use a specific sized cotton, we can change it. In coarse cotton, it will make a trimming for corvette. Please help me pronounce this in the comments. And help me pronounce this one in the comments too. And uh, with fine cotton, it can be used for children's clothes, small curtains, and make a sufficiently long foundation chain and work first. Oh, oh, we're getting into the pattern now. Okay, so let's see. Materials. I don't know what that is. It I don't know what that is. Walter Evans & Co's Crochet Cotton, either number 12, 16, 24, or 40. Well, I have a number 20, so why don't we go ahead and use a cotton number 20 now? I hope that's going to be okay with some. You know what? The thread is usually pretty hard for a lot of people to see, so I think what I'm going to do, just a moment, I'll be right back. Here's what I think I'm going to use. Just to make it easier for a lot of you to see, I'm going to use the Baby Burnett Sport. It's not super thick. It's not like a, like a Red Heart Super Saver. It's thinner, so it should be easier for you to see on camera. So it says here, make a sufficiently long foundation chain. Let me get this up here for you to see. Make a sufficiently long foundation chain and work the first row. Two treble divided by chain three in the first foundation stitch. So, okay, let's go ahead and start with making a sufficiently long foundation chain. Um, usually with the, uh, older patterns, when they say something like make a sufficiently long foundation chain, you can just make however many chains you want. And if you have a bunch left over on the end unused, you just unravel them. All right, so I'll be right back. I'm going to make a sufficiently long foundation chain for I don't know how long this is meant to be. I don't know what it is. It even says for children's clothes. I don't know. I'll be right back. I worked a chain of 40 because I don't know how long it's supposed to be. So I figured a chain of 40 is I can at least fit that on screen. So we'll go with the chain of 40 for now. And it says to make two treble. So that's going to be two double crochet divided by three chains in the first. Here we go. In the first foundation chain stitch. So I'm thinking... Let's try this. I'm just trying this out. I can always go back and change it. So let's skip one, two, three will be our first double crochet. 
And then let's skip three more. One, two, three for the chain three in the middle. So in the seventh stitch down, in the seventh chain down, we'll work one double crochet. And that should be our first double crochet separated by a chain three, maybe. Okay, uh, then it says to skip three and repeat. Okay, so I guess we're not chaining in between, so one, two, three, and of course I work in the back bumps. So skipping three, so in the fourth chain over, we will work two double crochet separated by a chain three. One, two, three, and then another double crochet into the same stitch. And then just repeat all the way to the end. One, two, three, and in the fourth chain over, work a double crochet, chain three, and a double crochet. So I'm going to continue to work this until the end and until I have no more chains to work into or if there's one or two left on the end, that's gonna be fine. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I just have one chain unworked on the end, so that's pretty good. So that is where I am at now. Let's look at what we do next. Now it says here, <clears throat> second row, in first scallop of preceding row, one double, which means a single crochet, five treble, which mean double crochets. So I'm just going to translate this into U.S. terms as my... Uh, people who are familiar from Australia and UK and so on, you're already familiar with these terms. So I'm going to translate this for US terms. One single crochet, five double crochet, one single crochet, then one chain, and one purl. Now, what I know about purl and crochet, there's two different things I know about purl and crochet. Number one is the purl slip stitch, and some of you may be familiar with that. But this is 1870, and in 1870, in other patterns I have seen and played around with, a pearl was translated into being essentially a uh, pico. But in this time, they also called them picos. So it just depends on the pattern author. In this case, I believe the pattern author is using a pearl for a pico. So as I've never seen... Let me think. I don't want to say I've never seen. I don't believe I've come across any pearl slip stitches in this era. I feel really confident that when they say pearl, they mean a pico. So, one pearl, then it says four chains, one slip stitch in the first of the four, one chain, miss under these the next chains the next chain stitch scallop repeat so that was a lot and i don't know what i'm i can't picture it so i'm just going to start going word for word with it so in the first scallop so it doesn't say whether we chain up or so in the first scallop of the preceding row work one single crochet and five trouble. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and chain one, and I guess we're not going to work into this stitch at all, so we'll just jump right into the chain space. That's one single, five double, one, two, three, four, and five, and then a single. Then it says... Then one chain and one purl. Okay, one chain. Then come back down into the chain, to the first chain that we made. Not the chain one, but the first of the chain. Here, I'll do that all over again. I probably should have uh, talked my way through that. So we're gonna chain one, then work three more chains. One, two, three for a pico, and then counting one, two, three chains down in that third chain down, we work our pico. And do we make it little? Yeah. Then it says four chains and one slip stitch in the first of the four. 
first of the four, what? One, two, three, four, and slip stitch into the first of the four here? Do they mean first of the four, like as in there's three chains and then this makes, do we skip, are we ignoring this? I don't think that's right. <laughs> it looks like it's trying to be right, but that ain't right. That can't be right. Um, let me play with this off camera just a little bit, and then I'll be back and see if I haven't figured it out and I can get us through this portion. <laughs> I see what I was doing wrong. They were telling you how to make the pearl. Okay, that's what I was doing wrong is I was being way too literal. So here's what it wants you to do. Okay, okay. I get it now. Yay! I get I get so excited whenever I figure uh almost said the S word when I figure stuff out. <laughs> okay, so like I had said before, without unknowingly I didn't know that they're they're telling you how to make the pearl right here. It is a pico with a chain four. So like I said before, you're gonna chain one as it instructs us to chain one, then work a pearl. Then we're gonna do our three chains, and that is our three chains and then we come back and we work a pearl or we work a pico then we're going to chain one again right here chain one miss under these the next chain stitch scallop and then repeat from here no from here so we chain one and it says to miss the next chain Chain one, miss under these, the next chain stitch scallop. So miss under these, I think what they're saying is, under the pearl, we're going to skip that chain scallop. They're calling these chain scallops, what we would refer to as just like a V stitch. So I think under the pearl, which tells me something else now, Am I in the wrong spot altogether? Let's try this again. Okay, working with my very first chain one, I think I'm gonna work a single crochet right into the top of that double crochet and work my five doubles into the chain three space. Two, three, four, and five. Now work my next single crochet into the top of that other double. Now we can work our purl. So one, two, three, four, but slip stitch back into the chain, into the third chain down. And chain one again. Now we're gonna skip this and do this again right over here. I'm going to skip this whole thing, the two double crochets and the chain three, and start with my first single crochet. That seems right now. Now that seems right. Now I'm kind of wishing I had made this in a finer cotton. I kind of want to see this in a finer cotton. I am going to switch to a cotton. I'm going to get caught up right here to this very stitch where we're at. I want to see this in a finer cotton. Okay, I'll be right back. So I'm all cut up to the exact stitch I left you at. I went and found this number three cotton. So it's it's a it's a finer cotton, but it's not fine cotton. So hopefully it'll still be thick enough for some of you to see what's going on. I just really wanted to see this in something a little finer, and I think that's going to be neat. So okay, this is what we have so far. All right, let me get you down in here just a little bit. All right, so we're gonna repeat this all the way to the other end. So we just worked our first single crochet by, by joining the pico section or the pearl section. So now we immediately jump into the chain three space and start working our five double crochets. Oh, and I also switched to a 2.75 millimeter hook. That's two, three, four and five. 
Then we work a single crochet in the top of the double. And then we work our purl. So that's gonna be a chain one and then chain three for the pico. And then chain one and skip over everything here, the chain three and the two double crochets and into the next double crochet over, we work our first single crochet. There we go. Then we work our five doubles into the chain three space. One, two, three, four, and five, and then a single into the top of the double. Okay, so I'll be right back. I'm gonna finish working this all the way to the end. So there we go. Yeah, I'll be right back. The only thing I can't quite figure out how to get around is I just finished my last, like, uh, what are they calling them again? Uh, shell or scallop, pardon me, scallop. And then I have this on the end here and I don't quite know what to do with it. So I'm just gonna leave it for now. So let's see, what do we do next? Third row, one double crochet in the chain stitch on either side of the purl in the preceding row, five chains. So that's it, that's everything for, th so I guess that's gonna be the repeat. So basically I'm gonna start this row off with a chain of eight that's gonna be three for our first double and then the chain five separating. And it says on either side of, does that mean I need to work one on both sides? So there's this side, I guess I'm gonna work in the chain, into the chain on this side. Okay, then it says, in the chain stitch on either side of the purl in the preceding row, chain five. So am I gonna, okay. One, two, three, four, five, and just on the other side of the purl, I'm gonna do it again. Right through that chain. And then one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna jump over the scallop and do it again right in that chain one space but I'm working in the chains. So I guess this is gonna be the repeat all the way across. One, two, three, four, five, over the top of that pico or pearl. I like that it's called a pearl. Sounds pretty. I also like the name pico too. I like them both. Okay, so it looks like this is what we are working with. It is a bummer that I've got this extra little group of chains down here, but that's okay. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, so here is what we are working with now. There we go. Let's see what we have to do next. I already, I put a little thing here just to make it easier to see the separation of the rows. So fourth row, we're already starting off with the repeat because there's the asterisk. Two single crochet divided by seven chain in the first two treble of the preceding row. Insert the needle underneath the upper parts of the stitch. That can be interpreted in a lot of different ways, couldn't it? So I'm gonna chain one, and I'm gonna start with one single crochet, because even though they said double, they mean single. For us, it's single, I mean. Seven, one, two, three, four, five, six and seven and then another single crochet in the next double crochet is that right two double so two single divided by seven chain in the first two treble i think that's right in the preceding row, insert the needle underneath the upper parts of the stitch. Yeah, we did that. Then 10 chain, one slip stitch in the fifth of those 10 stitches so as to form a loop 
So let's just let's just take this one step at a time. 10 chain. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So we have 10 chains, one slip stitch in the fifth of these 10 stitches so as to form a loop. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, and then a slip stitch. So as to form a loop, four chain and then repeat from here. One, two, three, four, and then we work our single crochet into the top of that double, chain seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then another single crochet in the top of the next double over, and then chain 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Count five stitches down, one, two, three, four, five, and work a slip stitch into the fifth, chain down, chain four, one, two, three, four. And then we begin again with a single crochet, chain seven, and on and on. So, okay, here's what we have going now. I will be right back. I'm gonna continue to work this repeat all the way to the end. This is looking quite fancy, isn't it? Oh my God. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm gonna end this with a chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, and then a single crochet I'm going to skip five chains, one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to work a single crochet right here in the top of that third chain up. Okay, so this is what we have now. It looks like a little crown. <laughs> I like it. Okay, let's see, what, what do we do next? And fourth row, fifth row. Okay, fifth row, one slip in the middle stitch of the scallop formed by seven chain in the preceding row. So let's just do take that one step at a time. So one, it doesn't say how many we chain up though. One slip stitch in the middle, okay. So chain up one, two, three so we're going to count three in one two three and then the fourth one over so i'm going to add i'm going to add two more for a total of five i'm just guessing because it doesn't really say so one two three four in the fourth chain up or over we work a slip stitch to me that looks right yeah Chain three plus two, give us a little bit of room. I don't know if that's right or not. It, I mean, it may be that it was meant to curve over. I, I just, I genuinely don't know. I'm going with it. Okay, then we work four double, three chains, five double, three chains, four double. All these 13 stitches in the loop of the preceding row so as to form a clover leaf pattern. Oh! Okay, are we, but are we, where are we forming it at? Because that, I mean, that wasn't the clearest. All right here? I'm guessing all right here. Or is it all right into here? Well, let's just do what it says. I'll show you it again from the beginning. So one slip stitch in the middle stitch of the scallop formed by seven chain in the preceding row. So I've done that right here. That would be the fourth stitch over. Then 
all of these steps here to make the clover, all these 13 stitches in the loop. Oh, wait a minute, in the loop? Okay, so wait, wait, wait. And up here, it says, so as to form a loop. So we do our 10 chain, then slip stitch in the fifth of these 10 stitches so as to form a loop. Well, there's the answer right there. Okay. So I'll put this back because we're still in. I think that's what they mean. Okay. So I'm just going to jump right on over into there. One. Two. Three. Now, why didn't you guys tell me that's what it meant? You were sitting there looking at it the whole time, probably screaming at your computer going, the loop. I'm just kidding. <laughs> One, two, three. And now I'm wishing I had worked this loop a little looser. We do five double crochet. One, two, three, four, and five, chain three, two, three, and then four more. One, two, three, and four. So that's the little clover. It's not perfectly centered onto the loop. That kind of drive me crazy. Let me see if I can center that better into that loop. Why are you doing that? There. That's, well, it's still kind of off to the side. Eh. Okay. We have our square clover now. <laughs> it's cute, though. Okay. Um, but then it says here, but fasten the fourth treble with a slip stitch on the tenth treble of the preceding figure. Fasten, fasten the fourth treble, fourth double crochet, with a slip stitch on the tenth treble of the preceding figure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Huh? Surely they don't mean that. No. No, I don't think that they mean that. Preceding figure. Well, I just don't, I, wait, we don't have a figure to look at. They probably have a, a photo or drawing of what they mean. Maybe. Of the preceding figure, maybe. Let's see what we do next. In the first, okay, no. So we, I, we have to figure this out. We can't move on until we figure this out. So, all right, let me try to figure it out. It would be so much easier to just do this. Say, yay, okay, moving on. <laughs> Why does there always have to be something quirky and complicated? It's like, okay, everything's kind of going smoothly now. Oh, but you know what? Nope. We got to do something different. It probably is for a reason. I mean, I'm certain it's for a reason. Okay, I'll be right back. I'm going to try to figure this out. Okay. You know, I, I'm just going to continue on. And I think that's what it means. So one, two, three, four stitches over. And then we work a... Was that a slip stitch in the first one? Or was it a single crochet? slip stitch. Okay, I I have in mind what I think it means. I'm just not putting it to words. So I'm just going to carry on and hope that it works out the way I am picturing it. There. Look at that. That looks better now. Okay. This is the way I'm picturing it. No. No. 
I'm just going to keep going. I don't know what they mean. So I'm just going to keep going. Did I chain one? Did I chain one over here? I think I did. I think I did. Okay. I'm just going to keep going and hopefully it works out because I don't have the foggiest idea what it is they're trying to say, but I'm sure it will make sense in the end whenever this thing doesn't turn out right. <laughs> so that was four and then five. One, two, three, and four and five. See if I can get myself a little bit more room. Then chain three and four more. One, two, three, four. Oh, that's it, just four. Okay, and then I'm going to slip stitch one, two, three into the fourth chain over. Yeah, I, do, I just don't know what they're trying to say. I thought maybe it meant, but then that would require, let me see if I can get this centered like I did that other one. There we go. I, well, now these are kind of flapping in the wind. Or maybe they're supposed to be. I don't know. I love these mysteries. I got to tell you, I love, I love this so much. Okay, um, I'm just gonna keep going because I, and maybe by the next round I'll understand what they mean better because at this moment I don't understand what they mean. I'll read it one more time. But fasten the fourth treble with a slip stitch on the tenth treble, treble or double crochet of the preceding figure. Are we supposed to? Speak? Well, no, because then that would put me back over here and I need to be working, I need to be going forward, not going backwards. You know, I'm just going to, I'm just going to keep going, I think. I don't know. I'm just going to keep going. We'll see how it turns out in the end because I'm pretty sure this one's got pictures. So we'll see how bad I messed this one up. <laughs> It's fun figuring it out though, isn't it? Okay, I'm gonna keep making these clovers. I've got two more to make, and then I will be back when I get to the end. Okay, so here's where I'm at now. I really hope this is right. So let's just move on to the sixth row. So let me get my little, my little sticky note here. Sixth row. In the first and last stitch of the middle five treble of the clover leaf, one double, seven chain between seventh row. Okay, I don't understand. I mean, okay. Okay, so here we are now with our square. They look square to me. Maybe it's because of the way I made them, but they look like square clovers to me. So let's, let me get my little deal here and we will move down to the sixth sixth row okay in first and last stitch of the five middle double of the clover leaf one single crochet and chain seven between and then we move on to the seventh row so in the first and last stitch so the first and last double crochet of the five middle double. So the first and last double crochets up here of the clover leaf. We work one single crochet with a seven, seven chain between them. So we'll work a single crochet, then a chain seven and a single crochet. Okay, well, wait a minute now. How do we get up there though? It doesn't, okay, so we don't have any instructions on how to get up there. So let's figure out how to get up there. Let's start, well, if they want us to work seven chains in between, let's just start with a chain seven. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And let's see how well that works out. Right there. How does that work? That's tugging a little. That's tugging a little, isn't it? So, okay, let's try, let's try 10. Let's just, let's just go an even 10. See how that works out. So what, I lost a stitch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And let's see if that's gonna be too much. No, I think that's better. I think that's better. Yeah, look at that. That is better. All right. Then it said seven crochet or seven chains. Sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I got a little piece of gold thread there. Oh, well, it can stay. And seven. One, two, three. Yes. Then we jump over here and we work another single crochet. And then I guess we're doing. It doesn't tell us what to do between. Well, I mean, seven between the the two singles. Maybe it's seven all the way across. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then a single crochet. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Jump over here. Okay, so let me finish this up really, really quick. And I will be back. Okay. Wondering if that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll be right back. Okay, so I worked my way over to the end. So how to end this. Um, we have ten. I think what I'm going to do is chain five, one, two, three, four, and five, and then yarn over twi twice for a double treble, but I think in the UK that's called like a treble treble. I think it's a treble treble. I think. I don't know. I don't know exactly. And then I'm going to go third chain up. Because that should be, wait, was that enough? One, two, three. Yarn over three times. Because a double treble makes like a chain five. It's like the same length as a chain five. Okay, I think we're pretty, well, that don't look super even though, does it? I think it works. No, it doesn't quite look that even. Wonder if, start with a chain four and then do the double treble. See if that helps it to look a little bit more even. No, let's see. Does that look a little bit more even? Yeah, I think it does. I think it helps. Okay. I mean, we're figuring this out on the fly, you know? The beginning and the end of anything in these older patterns is entirely up to interpretation. <laughs> Okay, seventh row. How far does this go? This goes seventh row, and then that's it. So we're almost done. Okay. One single crochet in the second chain stitch of the scallop, which is above the five middle treble of the clover leaf then two chain and one pearl. And in this pearl, they want it to be a bit bigger because they want you to do five chains and then slip stitch into the first. So that's gonna be a little bit of a bigger pearl or pico. So let's start, let's just start because this is gonna carry on. Yeah, then two chain. Well, actually, I think we're on the last row. I think we're on the last row. So we'll just take this bit by bit. So to start off with, one single crochet in the second chain stitch of the scallop, which is above the five middle treble of the clover leaf. So again, we have to figure out how to get there. So 
one single crochet in the second chain. So that's going to be right here. So let's start with a one, two, three, four, and five. Let's see if five is too much or just enough. One, two, and we work one single crochet. Now, does that look all right? Yeah, I think that looks all right. Yeah. Okay, then it wants us to work a purl, but with five chains. So wait, we chain two first. First we chain two. One, two. Then we chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And we work a slip stitch, count five down. One, two, three, four, five. So we're gonna work a slip stitch into that first one there that we made. There we go. Okay. And then we chain two. One, two, and one single crochet in the next chain stitch of the same scallop. So we're not going to skip any this time. We're going to come right down into the, the very next chain stitch over. Here we go. And it says to work a single. Okay, so that's what we have there. All right. Now it says into the next chain stitch of the same scalp. Now it says two chains and one purl, two chains, miss one. Okay, let's just, cause there's a lot here to break down. So we'll just take this a step at a time again, two chains, Two chains, one pearl. Let me get my little deal. Make this easier for us to... Okay, we're right here now. Two chains. That's where we're at now. So two chains, one pearl. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, then it says two chains, skip one, chain of the scallop. All right, one, two, and skip one, and then work one single crochet. So we're gonna skip this next one and the next one over, we work a single. Okay, so that's what we have so far. Okay. Now I'm gonna move this down, and it says two, now we're here. Two chains and one pearl, two chains. Okay. One, two, then one, two, three, four, five. One, one, two, three, four, five. Here we go. Then chain two. Then one single crochet in next, so we're not skipping again. So we just skipped on this one, but we're not going to skip this next one here. Well, what I meant to say is we skipped the last one, but we're not skipping this one. So then, then we work three chains, one double, one single crochet in the middle stitch of the following scallop, three chains and repeat. So three chains, one, two, three, and then one single crochet in the middle stitch of the following scallop, then through, okay, so we're skipping the next scallop. So skip three chains, three chains, and then one, or do we skip here? I think we're skipping. I think they're calling the chain space as a scallop. So one, two, three, and in the fourth, since these were chain seven, the fourth chain over will be the middle. There we go. This is a pretty dry cotton. It's like a raw cotton, and so it kind of sticks to itself a little bit. 
One, two, three. Then we start again. So let's see, what do we have here? So this is what we've got going on. I'm certain that this would probably look really nice with a fine thread and then of course with blocking and starching and everything. So this is just, we're just doing this rough. So we're gonna start again. So I'm gonna repeat everything I just did over here and all the rest of the tops of the clovers. And whenever I get back, that will be it. That's the last of it. So then we will pull back this curtain and reveal what it is we're working with. I like it though. I think it's really fun. Okay, be right back. So here we are all done and I haven't really, let's get these splayed out a little bit. So I think they're supposed to be, they look like little crowns. Not the neatest in the world because it could use, it probably could have, probably would have worked out better with a, a thinner thread and a bit of a tighter stitching work and obviously some um, blocking and starching. So let's see, what do we have? It says here number 14, crochet border. Okay, it's a crochet border. All right, I'll be right back. I've got to run down the hallway to my kid's room where he's got the pictures hostage. I'll be right back. Okay, here we go. And there it is. Here, let me turn it around this way. And there it is. What do you guys think? I think that, that uh, their clovers turned out way better than mine. I missed something here. Something is, something's going on with my clovers because they've got kind of, uh, it almost circled around it and mine is square. Yeah, I'm missing something. And that's probably that that one uh, that one section I just didn't quite understand. Slip stitch and to no, I don't remember exactly where it was, but there was a part here I just didn't quite understand. I think it was here. I think it was here. Yeah, but fasten the fourth treble with a slip stitch on the tenth treble of the preceding figure. Well, now we've got that picture. I've got it upside down because this is the way we work. So fasten the fourth treble with a slip stitch on the tenth treble of the preceding figure. So there is something that I missed. Something in here I missed. I don't quite get it. Maybe you guys can. Um, but I like this. This one was a lot of fun. This is really cool from 1870. Okay, there it is. I will see you guys in the next mystery pattern. Bye!